Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be testing a few different telescope tube materials against carbon fiber to show you just how much weight you can save when using a carbon fiber telescope tube. Now, that said, if you've been watching this channel for a long time, you know that I love carbon fiber. My wedding ring's carbon fiber, my wallet's carbon fiber, I have a lot of things that are carbon fiber. However, there's a lot of people that will argue, and I think this argument's going to continue for the rest of time, that using carbon fiber is actually a bad choice in telescope material. And to be honest, despite how much I love carbon fiber, there is some validity to these arguments. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now with any scientific testing, it's important to minimize variables as much as possible. For example, it wouldn't make much sense for me to test a big 10 inch steel tube versus a six inch carbon fiber tube. That's not really gonna give me meaningful results. So I'm going to spare you the lab coat today, but I'm going to try and keep this test as scientific as possible. So with that said, here are my three test subjects. Over here on the far end, I have the Celestron C6N. This is just a standard 6-inch Newtonian reflector, and the tube material on this is aluminum. Here I have a vintage Mead SN6. This is a 6-inch Schmidt Newtonian, and the tube material on this telescope is steel. Lastly, I have an Explore Scientific David H. Levy Comet Hunter. This is a 6-inch Maksutov Newtonian telescope, and obviously the tube material here is carbon fiber. This is actually what gave me the idea for this test in this video, is I saw all three of these telescopes in my basement, and I thought, you know what? These are all like the same size, the same length, and all three of them are different materials. So what a perfect way to test different telescope material tube weights is with these uh, six inch Newtonians. Now here comes the hard part. All three of these telescopes have a different optical design and different focusers and different tube rings. Those are all variables. So I'm going to have to remove all of that and get these telescopes down to the bare tubes and strip them down completely. They're gonna look like this. So fortunately, I already have uh, a second Comet Hunter that I stripped down. So that's, that's one down, <laughs> but the other two are still gonna take me forever. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up and I'll go ahead and tape my, my cells here. That way when I put my telescopes back together, I can get them in the, the proper orientation. And I'll go ahead and, and start stripping these down to the test. All right. Okay, I've got everything stripped down here. Nothing is left, no nuts, bolts, anything. These are literally just stripped tubes. You can see that the uh, C6N is a, just a tiny bit shorter than the SN6, which is just a tiny bit shorter than the Comet Hunter tube. But overall, I think this is a pretty valid test with everything stripped off of here and these tubes basically being the same size. So now what I need to do is make sure that my scale is properly calibrated. And to do that, I have a brass weight, and this has a mass of exactly 50 grams. So I'm gonna weigh this and make sure that uh, the scale is reading properly. Awesome, scale is properly calibrated, so let's go ahead and weigh these tubes. Okay, here comes the first telescope. This is the Celestron C6N with the aluminum tube. All right, that's coming in at 1,706 grams. Let's see how many pounds that is. That is three pounds, 12 ounces, so almost four pounds. Next up is the Mead SN6 with the steel tube. Wow. 4 pounds, 15 ounces, so basically 5 pounds. Uh, what is that in grams? 2,236 grams. That is a heavy tube. Super durable, though. Okay. Last but not least, here is the Comet Hunter with carbon fiber. Oh, 
<laughs> 990 grams. Oh, okay, let's see what that is. Two pounds, three ounces. Wow. Yeah, carbon fiber is a lot lighter, isn't it? We know that carbon fiber is strong, but wow, is it light. And obviously it's going to weigh less than the steel tube and the aluminum tube, but I didn't realize just how much lighter it was going to be until I disassembled this steel tube and lifted it up. And I was like, dang, the carbon fiber is going to be way lighter than this. And it was. In fact, the carbon fiber tube only weighs 44% what this steel tube weighs. That's under half. And the carbon fiber tube only weighs 58% of what the aluminum tube did just over half. So basically the same exact size here and you're cutting out half the weight when you use carbon fiber, which is pretty amazing. So with all that said, let's go, uh, go ahead and talk about some of the things that could possibly be considered disadvantages when using a carbon fiber telescope tube because we certainly know it's not the weight. <laughs> One big disadvantage with carbon fiber is its price. It is a space age material, so you're definitely going to pay for it. For example, a small like 80 millimeter or 100 millimeter refractor, you can expect to spend probably like three to four hundred dollars more to go with a carbon fiber tube over an aluminum tube. So that's pretty spendy. And as you increase your telescope size from there, you can also expect the, the cost difference to increase with carbon fiber. So yeah, price is certainly a disadvantage. To continue this discussion on carbon fiber advantages and disadvantages, I reached out to Stellarview because they have an excellent article on their website titled Aluminum vs. Carbon Fiber, and they agreed to let me feature this article in the video, so thanks to them for that. Uh, if you don't know who Stellarview is, they manufacture premium refractors, so definitely check them out. But to jump right into this, they talk about cooldown time, and this is one of the main areas of disagreement that people have when it comes to aluminum and carbon fiber tubes is cool down time. And they say that aluminum tubes adapt to the night air rapidly. Very true. Carbon fiber tubes may retain heat depending on how they're made. Former models that use felt lined interiors cooled more slowly than current models that use interior painted carbon fiber. But overall, I would say this is true that aluminum tubes do adapt and acclimate to the night air more rapidly than a carbon fiber tube is. And that's just physics. So. I have a 8 inch McCassegrain in carbon fiber and a 6 inch Maxutov Newtonian in carbon fiber and I honestly haven't noticed a huge issue with cool down time. Granted I do get them outside a few hours early so it's definitely something to consider uh, but I personally don't see it as big of an issue as people make it out to be. Uh, durability. Aluminum tubes are powder coated while carbon fiber tubes are plastic coated. Tightening the rings too much on a carbon fiber tube can create marks on the tube. The aluminum tube is technically more durable. I would agree with that. Solar work. Our white aluminum tubes do not get as hot outside in daylight as the graphite colored carbon fiber tubes. Yeah, if you're gonna do solar imaging or you're interested in solar, get a white aluminum tube. That just, to me, that's just common sense. Uh, a black carbon fiber tube is going to be much hotter than a white aluminum tube. And you never know, if you're in a hot enough area, the epoxy over that carbon fiber could even warp or melt or do all sorts of weird things. So yeah, if you're going solar, definitely get an aluminum tube in white color. Uh, thermal expansion contraction. This is another area where there's a lot of debate when it comes to carbon fiber and aluminum tubes. Some say they prefer carbon fiber since it does not contract when temperatures drop, which they believe maintains focus better. What they may not realize is that lenses shorten in focal length as they cool down. This does not mean that aluminum is better in this regard, it only means that you should not select carbon fiber thinking you will never need to adjust focus as the telescope cools down. Refocus is required for all telescopes as the temperature drops. I could not have said that any better. It doesn't matter what material you have, your focus is going to change. Now the rate of change, that could be different. Maybe you need to refocus more often with an aluminum tube or a carbon fiber tube, but either way, refocus is going to be necessary. And the really nice thing is, this isn't as big of an issue probably as it used to be because how many autofocusers are on the market now. So a lot of autofocusers are going to redo your focus when there's a one degree Celsius temperature change or after 30 minutes or whatever you set them to. So I don't think the focus issue is as big of a deal as it used to be. For visual observers, it potentially could still be one, but uh, honestly, I think Stellarview just put it perfect and how they said that. Yeah, it doesn't matter what material you use, you're gonna have to refocus throughout the night. 
To summarize, I'll just say whatever telescope tube material you decide on is a personal choice. I've owned several small refractors in carbon fiber as well as larger telescopes and enjoy the weight savings it provides me, especially on the bigger scopes. I also have telescopes with aluminum tubes and a few with steel tubes like this Mead SN10 and I've never had any issues with carbon fiber, aluminum, or steel telescope tubes. They all work. If your desired telescope is offered in different tube materials, you must consider price, weight, aesthetic, if that matters to you, as well as the thermal properties discussed in this video before you decide on which telescope tube is right for you. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up this video. I apologize, it took a little bit longer than I was expecting it to, but I just wanted to be very clear and transparent about how I ran this test and any of the variables there were between these telescope tubes. So I hope you enjoyed the results, getting to see the difference in weight between these three telescope materials. And now I've got three telescopes to reassemble and I have three telescopes to recollimate, especially the Mac Newt and the Schmidt Newt. Those are gonna be beasts. So hopefully that was worth it for me to do. I had fun, uh, but anyway, as always, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for watching and clear skies.